All right, welcome back for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the video and article that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those books that are still probably tucked away in those cheap boxes, those dollar bins, based off of some of the recent news, rumors, announcements, things going on in the comics, etc. This is kind of my list of books that on a scavenger hunt kind of feel you can go and dig out of these boxes uh, related to some of these topics. Hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like, subscribe. Hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. And uh, without further ado, if you want to see what books I got for you this week, because I got a bunch, just hang off for a few seconds after the intro, and I will be right back. Okay, so I know the last couple of weeks I've only been giving you like four stories or four topics. This week I got a few more, maybe not too many more books, but still a decent list of things that I think you can go and pull out of those boxes if you are willing to do the digging. Uh, we are going to start off with some DC stuff. Let's start off with Superman. Superman Legacy director James Gunn may have just debunked one of the re reboot's biggest rumors about the villain. Well... Did he? I don't know. I know a lot of people were speculating that the uh, authority is going to be the big bads of this film. We're getting a lot of casting announcements of a lot of DC characters, but even he said that he never said the authority would be present. So that's not really a denial, but at the same time, who knows? We don't know exactly what's going to happen. Because again, the theory is that it's the authority is going to be the antagonist, but it could be anything at this point. It could just be Lex for, for all we know. And there's always the chance that, you know what? Maybe they just aren't called the Authority because, as you know, if you read the books, they started off as a version of Stormwatch. So perhaps at this point in the DC universe, they're just going to be being referred to as Stormwatch before they become the Authority. Who knows? It's all speculation at this point. But for fun, let's look at some of the books of the characters that we've heard Gunn already sort of semi-confirm that we would be seeing again. It, things can change, especially in this this climate right now. I mean, nothing's set in stone. We got no writers, we got no actors, so we got no no content coming our way just yet. All of this is just speculation at this point. Until we actually get you know people under the cameras and we actually get film you know set, we got nothing. So for now, let's just have some fun and look at the what ifs. And we're going to start off with our first potential, which is Jack Hawksmore. I know, I still don't really understand his power set. He he connects and talks to cities i don't know it's still kind of a weird concept to me i mean grant morrison warren ellis you guys are you bigger brains than me i don't really get it but i kind of get it i'm interested regardless it always reminded me of george clooney i don't know i just always picture george clooney in this role for for even back in the day but that said his first appearance is an expensive book yes i i know these first couple these are already expensive so i get it i just want to remind those people who may not know that Hawksmore's first appearance was in Stormwatch 37. Not The Authority, but Stormwatch number 37, which was introducing a new era of Stormwatch. And you can see a bunch of new characters being introduced here. And Hawksmore is right back there in the back corner next to uh, Fuji's left shoulder there. Anyway, a bunch of characters. And if you want to see it on the inside, in the guts, he's also there. Jack, Jack Hawksmore, I'm going to make this quick. I mean, he, he's in this issue a little bit, not a ton, but he's in here a little bit. And we do get him. See, his name's right there. He's having a conversation. But like I said, this is already a pricey book. I just want to remind those and tell those who may not know about this book to when, you, when you're when you digging, look for it because you might find it. This is what's out there for a while. It's got heated up the last year or two once we heard the rumors that they were going to be coming to this new DC universe. These got expensive, but before that, these were pretty cheap books. Even here, I'll show you some of the discrepancies. Some sales recently, semi-recently, 18 bucks to 25 bucks. Yeah, that's a lot for a book I'm telling you could be in a dollar bin, but still. That is nothing compared to some of the asking prices, which for this book are more 40 to 50. So even here, you can see the kind of discrepancy over what is being asked for and what is actually being paid. Still some room there like for those two to mediate and kind of meet in the middle. So we'll see where this kind of falls. Bottom line is if you can find it for cheap, this would be a good book to keep an eye out for. Another character in this book is also another one that's already very pricey. I get it, I know, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway in case you want to know that the engineer was mentioned as another character that James Gunn would like to bring to you know, to the screen. So the engineer first appeared in, well, the authority, number one. Yeah, I know. It's still a reworked team that was in Stormwatch before, and you know, this is their first issue. 
Again, Warren Ellis, Brian Hitch. We get it. This is already a pricey book. And if you don't, she's right there in the cover. But if you don't want to buy it because she's right there in the cover, in the guts, there's the engineer right there uh, in, in the body of the story as well, talking to uh, Jenny Sparks. That said, this book's pricey. It's already pricey. Like I said, I'm just telling you so you know. Copy selling best offers on 55, best offers on 65 bucks. I didn't feel like digging out the actual accepted values. You get the point. This is expensive already. Asking prices 50 to 60 as well. Already expensive. There's also higher asks. There's hundred dollar asks. There's graded copies, etc. Just letting you know, keep an eye out for this one. Even still, even still, keep an eye out for because you never know. Okay, so now let's get into some other ones that maybe you weren't so quick to know uh, with the Stormwatch 37 or Authority number one. Let's go with The Doctor. Not Doctor Who, very similar in the sense of how the characters are kind of formulated about what, what they can do, but The Doctor in The Authority first appeared in Stormwatch. So The Doctor, of which there have been many, it's almost like a moniker, a title that gets handed down. The Doctor first appeared in Stormwatch 48. So this is near the end of the Stormwatch run before they shift over to Authority. But in issue 48, uh, in this first part of the story, Warren Ellis gave us the Doctor. Uh, and here we, in the guts of the book, we get introduced, introduced to the Doctor is the healer, the magi magician, the modern shaman, etc. I, I feel like it's really just based off of Doctor Who a little bit, but you, you get it. Point being, this book isn't one that's been on like a lot of the lists haven't seen like a lot of things heating up it's not that it's cheap don't get me wrong to say that it's it's nobody knows about it but i'll point this out that look copies recently have sold for only like seven bucks to like ten bucks not too much there but what was more interesting is you see that empty spot on the other side is i couldn't find any available right now they're not out there but go check those cheap boxes because you probably can still dig them out of there so that's why i'm telling you to go pick up the first appearance of the doctor Outside of that, uh, who else did he mention? He mentioned another character, but it was also like uh, an authority one, also a very pricey book. So I didn't want to go that route. And I'm going to tell you about a fourth character and a fourth book that isn't actually confirmed, but is a prevalent theory of a possibility. And that character, same similar tone and vibe to what we're looking forward to here in the authority is Manchester Black. Yes, he kind of gives off like a Billy the Butcher vibe from the boys. Kind of feels like he belongs in the authority almost, but he isn't. He was with the elite and he was introduced in Action Comics 775, this issue here. And this one even is already a little, a little bit pricey, but this is kind of like an outside the box. Well, maybe not outside the box. This is kind of like a side play that you can have here just in case. Because if we do get this character, this is the kind of character that would you know steal some scenes and uh, probably cause this book to really spike if there's anything confirmed with it. So it just doesn't hurt to know about it, and it doesn't hurt to keep an eye on it and keep an eye out for it if it's cheap. Character, again, first introduced here. Purple hair. Probably would play well uh, on screen today as well. Yeah, you got a whole you know punk kind of vibe here. It works. I don't know. It would work. I think it will work on screen as well. Sold copies of this recently. Well, 20 to 30 bucks. So like I said, it's still not a cheap book. So this is even an, an outside shop. You're finding one, but it doesn't hurt to look. I have found it before. It's been a while, but I have found this in dollar boxes before because it's just action. It's just an action comics book. And they printed a decent amount too because it was in semi-anniversary, 775. I mean, they made the number red. It was sort of an anniversary type of issue. So there was a higher than normal print of this for the time. So there are copies. There are copies out there. Available copies of this as well, like 25, even up to 40. So there are some higher asks too, but it doesn't hurt to know. And that's why I wanted to start off there because yes, most of these books are already a little pricey, but doesn't hurt for me to give that information for you. So you have it. All right. So let me go to a different story. Let's go to a different, different angle here. And this is a weird one because I tried to really connect this com to comics, but I had a hard time doing so. And that is, I didn't even know this trailer was going to happen. So I saw the trailer for Wonka. Right. Kind of interested. Kind of into it. All right. I mean, I like this this kid in Dune. Like, he's a pretty good uh, Paul Atreides. So Timothy Chamelay is going to be Willy Wonka. Doesn't seem as weird as Johnny Depp's version or as silly as Gene Wilder's. We'll see how this plays out, how, how he does, and, and how he kind of fits into those mythos. But interesting, you know, story and movie that we're getting. I figured there had to be some sort of comic appearance. And I looked, and there's a lot of magazines, etc., 
But as far as actual in the comic book type appearances, the best I could come up with, and I'm not saying this is the exact first, but this is the first that I could find, was in a Simpsons comic. And it's going to be like a one paneler. But still, he showed up. Willy Wonka showed up in Simpsons comics number 85. So I get it. That's a weird thing to go and look for. But a lot of these Simpsons comics aren't that expensive. There are a bunch that are, or a few that are, you know, sought after because of what they're homaging and what stories were inside, etc. But this one, here we go. 85 is not too bad. You get that infinity cover going into the, you know, into infinity. But there is the one panel inside where we do have Mr. Wonka right there. So, yes, it's Willy Wonka in the Simpsons universe, but it's still Willy Wonka. Not like, you know, like a made up knockoff version of it. It's supposed to be Willy Wonka. So there you go. He's in comics. I'm, again, I'm not 100%. This is the very, very first, but it's the first I could find. So it doesn't hurt to go look for it. Copies of this book, it only sells for like five bucks. Granted, it had $10 shipping, but still, it's also like five bucks. Uh, available copies anywhere as cheap as two bucks up to 10 bucks. So, again, not a pricey one or anything. And nobody's really selling it as a first Willy Wonka, but that's what I can find. So, uh, let me know if there's another or a very first issue of Willy Wonka out there. But this is what I dug out when I was looking. But <clears throat> with that, let's move on to the next bit. Talked a lot about Mortal Kombat over the last month or so. And yes, that's another movie that got halted on production. So we're going to be waiting for our Mortal Kombat 2. But we're getting still some more info of characters we are going to be getting in this new flick. And I'm looking forward to it. So with this side note, new cast additions. We know we're getting Carl Urban, Billy the Butcher as Johnny Cage. And we're getting Jade and we're getting Katana. Katana, Johnny Cage, they both still show up in that Mortal Kombat book that I told you a while back ago. It's like a really expensive, that Mortal Kombat 1, like that preview issue. Already expensive. So already covered that one but out of this grouping the character that appeared in something else for you to look for was jade so jade was just it looks like a recolored version gave her a little bit different weapons than you know katana and melina it's like we'll make her green and they use kind of the same you know body type and all that and just whatever that's how the video game worked in the comics she first appeared in this malibu issue mortal kombat battle wave 2 so keep an eye over that. Yeah, I mean, this is some cool 90s art. You got Baraka on the cover there and uh, et cetera. But her, she shows up here inside this issue. Oh, she's green. Oh, she's there with smoke. And uh, yeah. So just keep an eye out for it. It's not an easy one to you know to dig out of a box, but it's one that uh, is worth knowing about and worth looking for. I mean, take a look for the whole run. I think there's only four issues in this Battle Wave uh, series, but issue two is where we first see those panels of Jade. Copy sold, have sold for a decent amounts. So that's why this book does sell if you can find it. But it's one of those kind of things that maybe not everybody knows to pull it, even in shops. So maybe you find it in a box. It's Mortal Kombat. You never know. 20, 20 bucks there sold. 30 bucks, whether it's issue two and three, uh, sold. And that one was signed. So you could also be paying a premium for the signatures. Uh, asking prices, however, 10 bucks to 13 bucks. So there are even cheaper copies out there online. Why they're selling for so much more? Well, I don't know. It's just going to be conditioned. And like I said, that one sale, there were signed. So you have that factored in too. Anyway, just a book to know, book to keep an eye out for. Moving on. I told you, I got a, I got a few things for you this week. I got, I got more. I got more. Up next. Also, by the way, sorry this was late, but it, it just was a busy week. And it's probably going to be a busy few weeks coming up. So I will do my best to keep getting quality content out for your consumption. But here we have the X-Men. A world-ending mutant team might be back on the board. I will admit, I'm a big X-Men fan. I'm sure you guys have known watching the channel, but I have not been the best reader of the last bunch of years. Just in and out. I've just been in and out here and there. Just you know, Even with the House of X, Powers of X stuff, all that. This story here is going to go back to that uh, Storm of Swords type stuff, which that at the time, I just what I couldn't keep up. There was just so many titles uh, coming out at the time. I just couldn't keep up. So not have the best handle on this group that was introduced here and brought back in this recent issue of the Heralds of Apocalypse. So here in the Heralds of Apocalypse, it looks like we're getting this team back. The Locust, uh, Locust Vile, I think that's what they're called. Anyway, like I said, I'm a little weak on that that little group because I wasn't reading as well back then. I wasn't keeping up. I'm freely admit that. But 
they look interesting. The whole Araco thing, this whole there was kind of like a whole separate level of mutants that were just evolved on a different like plane. I don't know. Crazy ideas like Hickman and all that. They have crazy ideas, high concepts. I like it. I dig it. I'm interested. I got to admit, I got to go back and read a lot of the stuff, reread some of the stuff that I did actually read because my handle on it these days isn't as strong as I'd like it to be. But maybe coming back based off of that issue, maybe we'll be seeing this team back again. This locust vile squad of mu different mutants. It, it, again, there are mutants that were mutated out. Yeah, again. I don't want to try and, and misspeak on what they are, but let's just say baddies worth a look first appeared here in Hellions, number six, part of that uh, X of swords, cross of swords. I mean, look at that. It's part 18 of 22. Come on now. 22 part. You got to You got to relax with the pieces. Like we don't need so much. It's, it's like the CW shows. We don't need so many episodes. You're like you're just too many, too many parts. It's too big. You make the event just, too big, too, too big to keep up with. That's it. Hellions number six. Uh, and inside we get that panel, which I already showed you, but there's, in, you know, introducing them. That's it. This book still pretty cheap. And I think it's a solid play if you can find it for cheap enough. I mean, copies only sell for two to five bucks, but it's a team of villains. You're getting a lot of bites of the apple there. If any of the villains themselves start to stand out or get a bigger role than part of this group, but even the group itself. I know team firsts are always a tough play because it's a team and there's so many characters, but in here, it's kind of both. You're like, you're getting the individual pieces as well as the team all in one. So, hey, if you find it for a dollar or two, that's all I'm saying. I'm not telling you to go invest, you know, 20, 30 dollars in this book and this is the next great, you know, key book. I'm just saying, just take a shot. Who knows what could happen if you find a cheap one in a box? Because even online right now, copies are looking only for three to five dollars. It's not expensive. Not saying it should be expensive or it's going to be expensive. I'm just saying, hey, sometimes you take a shot. And based off of some of the crazy ideas and some of the angles we might be going now with the X-Men and the X-Men universe, maybe these guys get a bigger role. So if you think that might increase the value of their first, then go and grab one. If you don't, you don't care, well, then don't worry about it. It's no big deal either way. Like I said, I'm talking about pulling out of a cheap box. Low risk, low risk. Up next. Marvel has announced a lot of weird stuff coming our way. Yes, we are getting Kamala Khan back already off of her death, and she'll be back as a mutant. And we are getting some more titles just thrown our way, including MJ is going to be running as the new Jackpot. I know when the character of Jackpot first came out, that was the big thing. Well, I just got red hair. It's, it's MJ. MJ's a superhero. She, it's called Jackpot. Here, face the tiger, hit the Jackpot. It's MJ as a superhero. And it wasn't. But now it is. So, in Amazing Spider-Man 31, we are going to be introduced as her debut as the new Jackpot. But, apparently, again, going back to this, I'm still a little hazy on all the brand new day stuff with Spidey as well, because I just really dislike the storyline and the angle and the direction of the time. So, I just kind of speed read a lot of it. So, my handle on how this Jackpot thing plays out is also not the greatest. But I can tell you that there were two characters that technically played Jackpot. Back at the origins. First one being Sarah Errett version of Jackpot, who I think was the first in costume, but not the first one we saw. I forget how it played out. Regardless, the character itself was first introduced in the free comic book day from 2007. The Amazing Spider-Man one here also had uh, Mr. Negative in there, uh, etc. Gets sold that way a lot of times online and it does OK. It's done better right now. It's down to about uh, what are we looking at? Sales in the five to six dollar range and it was a free book hey free book so you can't go wrong there and with free books these are the type of things you still could pull out of cheap boxes and dollar boxes because it's marked free on the front free comic book day they just get jammed in boxes when they find overstock you know so just say good place to look for it you still get a few bucks for it asking prices they're more like nine to fifteen and you can see how they're listed first promo appearance of jackpot mr negative etc so go ahead and look for it but the other character that played, and this is where it gets kind of confusing. Uh, so Alana Jobson, who was the best friend of Sarah Eret, however you say her name, pretended to be her and then like took her name and then they took the costume. I don't remember. It, it was kind of confusing. All it was, I think, was a lot of misdirection to just tell us that this is not MJ just because she has red hair. That's ultimately how I read it. So all the other shifting of the shell, you know, little shell game that they're playing with the names and the identities, 
doesn't matter. It was all just, you know, try to trick us into thinking it was MJ. And it's like, it's not MJ. Anyway, this version, I guess you could say, first appeared in 546, ASM 546, part of Brand New Day. And this is why I said with Brand New Day, I was just, uh, I was kind of frustrated by the story. It's, I just go bait. Bottom line, the whole trading his marriage to bring Aunt May back to life was just, I don't know, it was just kind of silly. I don't know, I, I get it, but I don't know, I just, ugh. well, let's not rehash old stuff. That said, she only shows up on a screen in one panel here, as they mentioned, this character of Jackpot. And this is the Alana version, not the Sarah version. So, okay, so they're kind of different, but kind of the same. Doesn't matter. This is another book. It's not all that expensive. I mean, five bucks up to $24 that I've seen sales go for. Asking prices as cheap as eight bucks up to 20 bucks. So very inconsistent pricing here with our issue 546 because of that. Uh, again, I think it's a lot more Mr. Negative related, more so than Jackpot. But right now with the MJ Jackpot stuff, we'll probably start seeing increases as far as the Jackpot angle goes. So just be mindful of that. One more for you for this week, and another crazy title Mar Marvel's just throwing our way is they're going to be giving us a new White Widow. So Black Widow, Yelena Belova is getting her own series. I'm assuming they're going to call it the White Widow because, well, I don't have to assume. That's actually what's on the cover. So we're getting the White Widow. There you go. It's going to be a hard costume to keep clean. But this is a title we're going to be getting a few months down the line. We know, I'm not going to give you pricing on it, this one is already also very expensive. We've been through the whole speculation cycle on the Black Widow movie and her future as the future Black Widow, Yelena Belova. So when Humans number five is still a book to keep an eye out for, be mindful of as it's her first appearance of Yelena Belova. Here are who I am, the Black Widow. We get it. I, we've gone over this. It's already very pricey. I get it. And I've even talked about this next series as well, but I think this is still the better chance of something you can go and pull out of those cheap boxes because I used to find them all the time. I still look for them. I haven't been looking for them recently, but I probably will look for them again. And that is her first, like, mini, like, starring uh, yeah, the Alina Belova. But anyway, so the Pale Little Spider, uh, like, run on Black Widow. So it's Greg Greg Ruka, great writer, Ego Cordray. We got these uh, Greg Horn covers. This is from the Max line of, uh, of Marvel, so it was a little more on the adult side. Only three issues. So it's issues one two and three and she still looks like rosie perez in that issue too for some reason like when i see that picture it makes me think of rosie perez from uh you know do the right thing anyway these are the three issues three issue series you can find these just go digging you'll find these you'll find these and uh granted pricing can still be inconsistent on them even now sets of the three can sell for she was 25 to 40 bucks individual copies could be anywhere from like four to ten to twelve wildly inconsistent that's what digging out of the dollar box is. You're taking a chance. You're, you're seeing what you get. Sometimes you strike it. Sometimes you don't. But it doesn't matter. It's a low risk, low cost investment. It Also, it should be fun. So that's another reason why we do this. It's just fun to go and dig these books out when you find them. Like, hey, look at that. Look what I found. Black Widow. Available copies. Once again, 12 bucks to $25 for the whole three issue set. It's not going to make you rich. It's not the point of this. But... Keep it comics fun. This is something you might be able to find a little easier than, than that in Humans 5. Because, yes, obviously, keep looking for the in Humans 5. But the chances you find that in a dollar bin are slim. But you might got a better shot to find these Black Widow books. So that's why I figured I'd pivot and tell you about these again, even though we've talked about these before as well. But since I gave you a ton of other books, I didn't feel bad rehashing and recapping. Plus, not everybody watching now watched when I started doing this a couple of years ago. So occasionally, there's going to be a couple of repeats. But with that all said, that is finally it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Sorry that it was late. I meant to do this on Thursday, but I didn't have time. I meant to do it on Friday, didn't have time. So I'm getting this done Saturday while the SNS guys are doing their live thing. We might drop this late tonight, or I might just save it and drop this like early Sunday ahead of the Star Wars show. Again, my scheduling is going to be a little weird the next couple of weeks, but I'm still going to do my best to get you the quality content you've come to expect because I don't want to give you anything less. But thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you all. Hopefully you appreciate everything we do here on the channel. Please check out all of the shows, all of the live stuff we do here as well. And with that, I will see you later with some more content. All right.